Hello everyone, this is Onito Ni, and once again, let's take a look on some of the beautiful places here in the countryside. Last May 19th, Korea celebrates the birthday of Buddha. So, come with me and let's visit some of the most visited temples here in my place. For those who are new to this channel, this channel talks about the Korean way of life, Korean culture, life in the countryside, beautiful places to visit, and of course, I'm a married immigrant. So this channel also talks about the life of married immigrants in Korea. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Our first stop is the Moisa Temple. Moi means doing nothing. If you want to forget the troubles of this world and have some control on your inner peace, I recommend you spend some time at Moisa Temple. This temple has at least 1,000 years of history. It is simply beautiful surrounded by mountains. They say Moisa Temple is the temple of the Zen Zek in early Gorya period. And also this temple is famous for appeasing the memes of the dead body, which is done in a ceremony. You can find Korea's 13th national treasure in this temple. This is a must place to visit if you are in Korea. Next stop is the Pinyansa Temple. What I like in this temple is the tranquil ambiance all year long, even in the daytime, because it is a forest of familiar trees that are in full bloom in the month of November. And I must say, the forest turns into red as it is covered with flowers. The camellia trees skirted the road of the temple and people all over the country come to visit and witness this beautiful sight. This is considered Korea's National Monument 151. In the springtime of the year, Buddhist and non-Buddhist believers come to the temple to celebrate the birth of Buddha. And as you can see, the roads going to the temple are decorated with colorful lanterns. And this illuminated the place in the evening. Such a beautiful sight. And the people in charge in the temple arrange various performances and very awe-inspiring parades. How sad we have the coronavirus this year. There are people who are scared to go out and do their worship. As for me, I go earlier, so there are no people around, so I can take a video. Approximately one-fifth of South Korea's population are believers of Buddha, and Buddha's birthday is treated very important. In fact, it is declared a public holiday that is widely celebrated across the country. A week before the celebration of Buddha's birthday, or even before that, you can see already lotus-shaped lanterns being hanged not only on the roads going to the temple, but you can see lotus-shaped lanterns just everywhere. Everywhere!
Before COVID, people who visited this temple can drink of the water here if they are thirsty. But I guess not now because we have this uh, coronavirus. Many believers also make a small donation to hang their own paper lantern in the temple complex. On these lanterns, they write their name and a wish that they carry in their heart, whatever their heart desires. So this is it guys. This is how we celebrate the birth of Buddha. I hope you like the serenity of the place. Very good for meditation and contemplation. If you are a nature lover, then this place is just right for you. If you are used to a life in the city, then maybe this place might be difficult for you. So, I hope you enjoyed our short tour and a little information about the temples here in my place. And the information on how we celebrate the birth of Buddha here in South Korea. If you have some topics you want me to talk about, please leave a comment below. And if you like our topic, please click that like button. And if you want this kind of information in the future, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you will be notified if I have a new video. This is your On It On Me, wishing you the best of life ahead. Bye! Annyeong!